today, we got a good one for you. And you know it's gonna be a good one because you can see what's on my head. Old Wild Bill. Today, we're gonna do something, well, we're gonna do a chore. Like, do a little bit of spring cleaning, but we're gonna make it fun. You ready for this? I'll show you my junk if you show me yours. Boys, huh? Huh? No? Okay, well, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, we're here at my storage yard. This is kind of like the overflow facility for all the stuff that, uh, you know, basically anything, projects that we started that never got finished, or tractors that we recovered from islands that we had nowhere to put, or dozers. And I got an idea. I'm gonna pull out certain vehicles that we don't necessarily need anymore, vehicles, equipment, trailers, whatever, and we're gonna put it here on the screen, and we're gonna give you guys the opportunity to trade us for it. Trade me something. Shoot me an email. It's gonna be info at heavydsparks.com. Once you start seeing this different stuff pop up on the screen, I just want you to shoot me an offer. Look, for example, this guy right here, the green four-wheel drive Dodge van. We bought this 2014, 2015. It was gonna be a TV show project. This thing is badass. And we'll get into the details of all this stuff here in a little bit. But the example is, hey guys, we don't need this van anymore. What do you got? Some Pokemon cards? Or you wanna trade me a piece of land in the middle of the Michigan Swamp? I know Whistling Diesel has a bunch of that that he loves. Just kidding, Cody, I know you hate that. Buckle up because spring cleaning's never been this much fun. Yahoo! Party time! I don't know what we're doing yet, but I'm about to find out. You doing what the, the uh, mystery machine? Uh, yeah. You better not be smashing it. No, you're not smashing that. We're trading it. We're trading it. All right. Uh, Pokemon cards, what are we trading? <laughs> Minutes later. Park break off. And make sure that's a neutral and give it a little bit of gas. You got the rest of the park break. <laughs> Life lessons. Get over there on that cat. Okay, for those of you that may not have big items to trade or a lot of money to spend, we have items for you too, like badges, on badges, on Power Stroke badges, on Chevy badges. You don't want a badge? Shop vac attachments. How about an authentic football that we probably used when Marshawn Lynch came here? I mean, it's kind of small. I don't know why else it would be here. None of us toss the pigskin around. Or if you need some more decor for your house, maybe a seat to sit in, I'll be willing to think about this beautiful seat. But you know what, for now, for now it's not for sale. For now, I think I might use it for patio furniture or maybe an office chair. Or maybe it'll be a supervisor's chair and I'll just help everyone from here. Yeah, hands, go round up the rest of the stuff. <laughs> I may or may not just have squirrel tapped hands with the chain <laughs> hanging from the bucket of the excavator. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Never have I ever. Oh. Ah, I seen this on Dude Perfect. You throw a ball, you try and make it in somewhere. I'm thinking, have the guys from Dude Perfect ever thrown a football on a movie excavator into the bucket while it's hard for lift? Two, four, two. <laughs> Open up! Ah, off the top! So 
close. We're gonna try again. Got a shot. Oh, ah! <laughs> Give it, hands. hands. Hands is probably gonna make it first try. Watch. Do it perfect. It's okay. I am I am done. In, warm in up. editing, he could probably make it look like it went in, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Hey, if you guys from Dude Perfect just saw that, teach me your ways. Teach me how to make the shot. I want to look cool like you guys. And you know what? Maybe, I don't know, maybe you come out, throw some pigskin with us. We'll get some excavators spinning circles. We'll try to make them in the buckets. Who knows? You down? I'm down. You down? Yeah. Wait. Ah, way off. How do they do it? How do they do it? Ready? Dude, perfect! What? I mean, no way! What else? What else? What else can I accomplish right now? No, no, no better. I got a better one. The mouth of the old fort over there. But that's not moving. Right into the colon. Beast! Count it! Count it! How did he do it? I don't know! You will never know! You will never know! <laughs> Trying something new today. This is a Sani 155 mid-size excavator. Um, Muscle's been using this up at his house, uh, building his new house, rock wall and stuff. And he's been ranting and raving about how great these Sani machines are. And I'll be very honest with you, I've never operated one. This is my very first time. Um, this is a newer company that was based overseas, but then they came to the North American market to start building excavators and stuff. So even though it says Sandy, this is actually made in America, this machine. So that is kind of what caught my interest. And uh, obviously you guys see us run CAT and a bunch of other stuff all the time. So I want to see how this machine compares. So far, I love it. It's like a mid-sized 30 to 35,000 pound excavator. It's got the rubber pads on the tracks, which is nice because it doesn't scar up trailers and uh, asphalt and stuff. It also has the blade on it. It's their largest uh, excavator with the blade on the front. The reason why I brought this machine down instead of our cap is A, I wanted to try it out, see how it operates, and B, because this one has a thumb. I don't have a thumb on my other machine right now. So the thumb is really handy to pinch cars, pick up trash, move things around. Um, it's great for material handling, uh, which is what we're gonna be doing a lot of today. Today, obviously, we're running a test on the Sani 155 excavator. This is a mid-size excavator. It's like a 32,000 pound machine, something like that. Um, I don't know, I haven't looked up the weight uh, limits on it as far as like lifting capacity. So we're probably just gonna find out by real life testing instead of like reading the book. Um, we lifted a forklift and that forklift is easily a six or 7,000 pound machine, which is very impressive. For a mid-size excavator, I mean, I, I don't know. It feels good to me. I realistically think the most we'll be able to lift as far as like just dead weight's got to be somewhere in like maybe the 8,000 pound range as far as like just straight up and down. Um, luckily, I don't think any of the stuff we have that we need to lift with this machine is going to be too much heavier than that. Other than that green forklift right there, the military forklift, that, that machine weighs probably close to like 15,000 pounds. So that's going to take um, a couple of different pieces of equipment to move around. I think it's a bitch. Um, and it might have also be up for trade. Um, so we'll see, but I'm very impressed with the machine so far. This is not like a, a paid endorsement either. This is just, we happen to have one of these machines kicking around and um, we wanted to try it out. So we'll see how it goes. We're gonna take a quick break from this because I just got a package. We're gonna do an unboxing. I, uh, a few weeks ago, a month ago, I don't know how long it goes. 
I saw these knives, these weapons online from Russia, and I was like, man, those look pretty cool. I want to try those. So I put it on order, fully expecting to never receive it. Like, I just thought maybe if it ships, great. If not, whatever. I'm pretty sure this is it. Okay. To this wonderful trailer. That one of Ready? Even better. Better than the Pokemon box. You got box? Uh, not that good. Okay, bring my slammer. Oh, that you would poison me right now. I placed an order on the internet. Yeah. On. Yes. From the Russian side. Yes. Yes. Five seconds. Just jump out of that real quick, hands. Let, just let him borrow that real quick. Let me just see that real quick. You're not getting back in, so, yeah, so we're clear. <laughs> I placed an order. Look at this. I'm a sucker for Instagram ads, and this one, this one you caught me. The, I got it from pants. the from the from the Federation of Russia. Did you get those yoga pants? I, I don't know. think so. I got those. And? Are you guys ready for this? <laughs> no I really hope these Hold things on. are as Federation awesome. of Russia. Yeah. Hold on. You're not even gonna let us guess. Let yeah, us guess. hold it and guess. We want to hold it. Is it a parka? Don't look. Russian military. Well, that's dynamite for sure. Is it edible? Something explosive. No, it's an explosive. I'm so excited. It's on liquid nitrogen. Wait, there's a handle right there. <laughs> Ooh, a handle to what? It's a, gun. It's a knife. Slingshot. Let me see a knife. Is it a knife? Ten, ten, ten commandments. It's a wrist rocket. Do you have a knife? No. Use a knife. Of course you got a knife. Push that button. Oh yeah, that's Ooh. the... What's oh, it got right there? Come on. All right. Nice Definitely is... looks like Russian packaging. <laughs> I'm not mad about. Dude, that's exactly what our packages look like when me and you and your mom were. <laughs> it is. Oh man, it's, they really. Oh yeah, that's a brick of explosives. Butterfly knives! Oh, look at this bad boy. Butterfly knife. Oh, that is an Instagram ad. Wait, 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 wait. TikTok. This was, I think that was the most boring one of the batch. <laughs> wait, why don't you use the new <laughs> knife to cut open? <laughs> Tell you what, Boris. Look at right this now. bad boy right here. Look at that, that's a nice now. knife. Oh, kidding me? Thank goodness it's got a compass. And it's got flint and steel, look. <laughs> You're damn right, thank goodness it has a compass. <laughs> oh. I've got a rape whistle for you, Hans. <laughs> Wait, why does that look twice. like it screws off, but it doesn't screw off? It has to. Wait, okay, so there's that one. And then there's... It doesn't pop off. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's the knife you thought was cool? Thing. Oh. I have one of those in my office. It's worth $300. This. this. Wait, there's more. <laughs> this is what I'm excited about. Ribbed packaging. How did you possibly For your pleasure. You wanted most last. Nutshell stun gun. If you stun gun me. Yeah! Baton! <laughs> but it's not just any old baton. It's a, it's this a cattle bitch. Thing? This bad bitch. They're like durable as shit. Hold on, wait. Wow. I'm done. This thing? Hey. Do a, do a pass in your window. Walk up. Whoa. Yeah, that was nice. Drive out your car, bud. Right, Hunter. Just retract it a little gentle. Break the back window. Get yeah. Hunter. This will be the most aggressive thing I've ever seen Hunter do. <laughs> I think breaking things is pretty tits. I don't know if that thing is. How do you open it? Oh. Get it, hands. Get it. Get it. That's nice, right? I put it away and try it again. <laughs> yeah, hey. first time we're out. Just right. yep. I'm gonna hit my hand right here and I'm gonna cuss so loud. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, worth to try to get hold of. Okay, well, what's the secret here? Okay, <laughs> get her whipped out. Ooh. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can do one. Diesel, it's your turn. You got the last window, the hardest one. Oh, you went the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that. That is hard to put back in. That's why we just leave it out. That's what she said. Guardian Liviosa. Uh, <laughs> 
Buy that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you should have seen these Russians <laughs> video with it. They were <laughs> the sh out of stuff. And they were comparing it to a Chinese one, or the Chinese one just folding. Okay. Fun part. I have no idea what's in these box trucks. Where's Dave? Let's get Dave over here. These three box trucks have been with us since the very beginning. I think one of them was like halfway full of fireworks at some point. Uh, so what you're about to witness is genuine surprise for all of us. We have no idea what's in here. You don't want to do the mystery box? I don't think we're going to do the mystery box because... How much would you guys pay for a mystery box? We don't know what's in there. Take a minute. In the comments below, what's it worth? Goes to the highest bidder. Could be fun. This one has. This one, I don't honestly. There's such a weird variety of stuff. Airbag. Oh, put that in somebody's seat. Except I haven't had, haven't had a two-stroke in since 2001, I think. Oh, hey, look at this. There's a weird smell coming uh, out of there too. Truck turbos. There's a giant Turbo. bundle of lights. There's Those lights are actually motorcycle really parts. Awesome. Whoa! We're not gonna talk about the sixth sled. That sled, John, Burnout got that for Charlie for yeah. Christmas, like four years ago. Thanks, Burnout. <laughs> this is this oh, is a tub yeah. of motorcycle parts. There's a paddle in there. Uh, there's a sweet FMF pipe. Well, that came from our storage. Yeah. What do we? This is where things get difficult because once that man starts digging through and starts realizing that. He That's needs, my old toilet He down. needs all of this. Oh, half a rock will watch. Oh, look at that. You can resize your watch. Hey, you see? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this one hey. apparently has some of my family's water hey. sports equipment. These are Charlie's uh, water skis. No. That's my old wakeboard. Let me get in there. It's got some um, race Come on, cameras. Dude, look at my old liquid force wakeboard. Remember this bad boy? David, remember that? Whoa, yeah. The old Rockwell board. I've done a few moves on that guy before. That's some camo race deck flooring. Actually quite a bit of it. Family Guy trivia game. We got a screen printing uh, dryer. That's actually a pretty nice machine. Golf shoes? Yeah, if these are 10. These are you? No, they're all good. They look pretty good on you, actually. Those are brand new. They're, they're brand new. It's a Family Guy trivia game. That's a paint bottle. Some. <laughs> What's left of it? All right, let's check trailer number three. Hold on. This one is currently being guarded by wasps, so that'd be something good in here. This is probably the least exciting one yet. Well, the U bolts. We should have auctioned them off. I'll be honest. All right. Well. This one Riveting. isn't exciting at all. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and just reposition these along the fence. Two of these are up for grabs, probably keep one. Or maybe get rid of all three, I don't know. Make an offer, show the cat of the box road. Good day to swim in the underground frack pool. Yeah, do you think we'll ever finish that episode? Do you think we'll finish that episode? Comment below, yes or no? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Is the guy who hasn't been here all month asking us when we're gonna finish stuff? Yeah. When was the last vlog, vlog you were in? Probably that one. You know what? I leave for one month and you guys don't finish anything. That's exactly right. We were waiting for you. No, we did finish a lot. We got two dogs and three dogs. That's true. We got. We were pretty efficient. Got a hell of a lot of equipment. I'm getting so tired of moving these same vehicles around over and over and over. I'm hoping this is the last time I gotta do this. You gotta keep in mind, I've got some employees' vehicles like the blue Nissan that belongs to Diesel Dave that he's never gonna do anything with, but part of his space that I share with everybody that I'll everybody have a car or two. So um, I think this will be the last time we have to move the majority of these though. I'm really excited to clear this out and kinda start over. New beginnings.
day. All right, guys. Well, that was quite the party. You saw, I mean, it was just a complete zoo here for a little bit. In fact, you can see I'm wearing different clothes because this is now day two. We just kind of went ahead and went all through the night last night and now we're back here today. Um, there was a lot of organizing to do, a lot of vehicles that we had to kind of figure out what we were gonna do with them because we have so much random stuff over here. But guys, I think we've compiled a pretty good lineup of weird, unique, awesome, and just overall really, really cool vehicles uh, for you guys to choose from. Now, here's the deal. As I told you before, I want trades. I don't necessarily want the exact same stuff. I don't want to like trade junk just to put junk here. However, I will consider literally anything. I don't even know why I gave you that disclaimer saying I don't want because literally I will, we will consider whatever you like. Like if you want to come out here and tap dance in front of our building for three days to trade for an old V10 excursion, we might just take you up on that. The, like honestly what we're gonna do is make a second video out of this so the cooler the more unique the more exciting the trade offer is the more realistically we're gonna take it also I realized that some of this stuff may be very valuable to some of you guys some of you maybe be like oh my gosh that 4x4 Dodge van I gotta have it with that said we may consider cash offers for some of the stuff so if something that you absolutely got to have and you don't really have anything to trade just shoot us a cash offer and maybe we'll go that route so I just want to clear this place out because we've got a bunch more projects coming in, especially all these old tractors we're picking up, and uh, I need room. All right, let me begin. 1986 Landall de-icer. I bought this from the Air Force. This thing is It probably only has like 2,000 miles on it, if that. It's a Detroit diesel. It's on a Ford 800 chassis, and that Ford 800 chassis is like the coolest vehicle I've ever seen. In fact, this one's hard to get rid of. I was gonna say that about all of them, because they're all hard. But this one is super unique. Automatic transmission. Um, it has a giant Perkins four-cylinder um, water pump, pony pump motor on the back, big water tanks. It's pretty complete. Can you go de-ice airplanes today? No, you're gonna have to go through and, and reconnect this and that, but I think most of the components are there. But if I were you, I would take this body off because the bucket lift still works. Uh, I would take that off and turn this truck into like something cool. Anyways, next up, we've got the white 4,000. This is a 31,000 pound semi-truck um i can't remember if it runs or not got a unique transmission unique engine um this thing's cool i really really love this truck and i bought it for a project i'm not gonna have time to get to it but i believe it was working when we bought it three or four years ago um 1989 chevy 3500 crew cab dually it's got like a 454 in it um it ran and drove i paid way too much for it I bought it, came down, and then we ended up taking parts off of it for one of our other TV show builds. So the whole gauge, cluster, dash, steering column, all that stuff's torn out. So it'll need some work to be able to put back together. Uh, 2014 F350 long bed, crew cab. This was like an oil filled truck. It was a great work truck until the motor blew up, but I think everything is there. I think. Transmission may or may not be. But other than that, it's pretty complete. I don't even know what year this is, but the coolest freaking Dodge van you've ever seen in your entire life. Uh, when I was young, some of you may remember this, Radio Shack sold a RC vehicle called the Jumbo Van. It was a big green monster van. I had like seven of those because I always broke them. This is like the Jumbo Van. It's like the real life version of it. Really cool, needs a ton of work. Um, we've never, well, we had it running and then we parked it, but it's gonna need all sorts of stuff. All the drive lines have been destroyed because it's been picked up by forklifts and stuff, but great project. Um, 2002 Ford Excursion, it's a V10. I don't even know why it's here. I'm pretty sure it runs and drives just fine. I, but we don't need it, I guess. Uh, five ton cargo truck. Basically from the rear axles forward, we cut the frame. Um, we took the motor and the transmission out of it, but the transfer case is there. The cab and the front part of the frame and some of the other parts and stuff are there. Could be a cool project for somebody. And it's sitting on top of a Chevy 1500 gas drivetrain. It was like a donor truck we bought for an LS motor. It's pretty much just junk. Um, 2000, no, 1992 Chevy three quarter ton 6.5 diesel. Um, this is the turbo diesel. Cool truck. We used it as a parts truck forever, but I can't remember. I think the motor runs, but transmission was slipping or something. I can't really remember. Um, so we just parked it. Uh, this project right here is another one that kills me to get rid of because I don't know if you guys know this or not, but one of the first things I ever started with in this business um, of like modifying vehicles was Land Rovers. 
back in 2012, I imported a bunch of diesel engines from the UK and put them in, uh, like Land, Land Rover diesel engines, we put them in the American Land Rovers because this comes with the diesel overseas. So this has the 200 TDI engine installed with the five-speed transmission. We just never finished it. Just like a bunch of loose ends. It'll probably fire up right now and drive though. Um, that thing's cool. Some Land Rover nuts. I have a feeling that thing's gonna cause a, just a lot of ruckus. People are gonna want that thing. Also it's the SC7, so it's got the pull down rear seats. O2 Ford Explorer, piece of crap, whatever. Uh, Subaru Brat, don't know anything about it. Somebody said it ran. I don't know, we bought it for parts and never ended up using them. Uh, old school 10 foot uh, disc implement for your tractor. Um, seems to be complete. Probably hasn't tilled the field in a long time. Uh, then we got our pile of axles, guys. We've got um, the five ton axles. We got a steer axle, which came off of that five ton cab over there. We've got a single rear axle that came off of a five ton that we bobbed. And then it's we got a couple of medium duty axles. I believe those are like either Chevy 5500, F550, or F650. So if you need a medium duty axle, um, take a look. You guys are gonna have to look at some of this footage and like dig through it and see if it's something you need because obviously we don't have a ton of time to go through every single part because that's the reason why we still have them. Our time is better spent doing some of the other stuff that we do rather than selling part by part, which is crazy because it's really good business. There's a lot of money sitting in this stuff. Um, trailer dolly right here. This is basically for your, uh, if you're pulling doubles or triples or whatever. Um, air brakes, kingpin, that thing does function. This right here is another uh, item that I think people are gonna go crazy over. This is the M1101 cargo trailer. This is basically designed to match up with a Humvee. Um, and it's awesome. It's got Humvee wheels and tires, the beadlock run flats, and it was like new surplus when I bought it. Being in our storage yard for five or six years, it's been kind of bonked and scratched and dented here and there, but it's complete. You can hook up to it and tow it away today. I have a feeling someone's gonna go nuts over that. This guy right here, the old International 706 uh, farm tractor with the farm hand um, bucket on it. It seems to be complete as far as engine and drivetrain goes. It just needs obviously tires and it's been sitting for probably 20 years. So somebody's gonna have to go through this thing and get it dialed. But cool old tracker, tractor and uh, the diesel farm tractor guys are, you know, it's funny because old farm tractors back in like the 40s, 50s, 60s, most of them were gas. It's pretty rare to find a diesel back then. And then as diesel became more and more popular, you'd start seeing bigger diesel engines. But um, this is kind of like the beginning of that era of, of diesel powered farm tractors. Uh, guys, another vehicle that I freaking love that I really sh just should hang on to and do something with, because you know I love tracked vehicles, is the Bombardier Sidewalk Plow. This thing ran and drove when I bought it. Transmission went out. We pulled the trans out, had it rebuilt, and then it never got put back in. So it's just disassembled. Um, but we'll give you all the parts and stuff we have for it. This is, could be something that somebody gets up and running pretty quickly. Uh, Toyota forklift, looks like a five or 6,000 pound uh, lift. All the parts are there, but I, it's never ran and it was never advertised to run. So who knows what it could need. Then we've got a piston bully um, tiller, trail groomer, probably just for parts. I don't know if this thing will ever work again. Uh, we got a Dodge 3500 um, rear axle from like a 94 uh, second gen. This assembly right here, guys, is something that I feel like uh, you might go crazy for. In fact, I took this off that five ton that we cut in half because I was gonna use this rear suspension assembly on the Vruck. We were gonna make the Vruck a six by six and still might. You guys better come get this thing from me. Uh, five ton, top loaders, uh, all complete. No damage. I mean, some of the airlines and stuff might be brittle and stuff, but for the most part, it's dialed. Uh, this guy right here, I'm pretty sure we're gonna do a TV show build on now. So unless you gotta have it, I think we're gonna keep it because it's a little diesel powered airport tug. Uh, Jackknife Jim's giant forklift. God, this thing is just big and beefy and annoying. It's a, uh, let's see, wow. 21,000 pound forklift. She's a beefcake. Um, US Air Force uh, manufacturer, doesn't say. 
Um, weighs 23,000 pounds. Thing's a monster. It's fairly complete, but also needs a needs to be assembled, put together. Um, but could be a good project for somebody who needs a beefy forklift. All right, guys, where do we go from here? All right. I I wasn't planning on talking about this, but my Prenoth Beast snowplow or snow uh, snowcat. This machine is the biggest, most powerful snowcat ever built. It's like 18 feet wide, Cat C13, I think. Huge power, runs and drives perfectly. I bought it to recover that excavator when it got stuck in the mud out on uh, Great Salt Lake. But th th this thing's awesome. I'm not necessarily selling it, but if you want it, let me know. I might be able to work something out on it. Oh, uh, what else? This old uh, international dump truck belongs to, it's a Lodestar 1800. This belongs to our friend Lacey, Lacey Blair, when she came out and worked for us. And I know that she's, she still might do something with it, but she also might entertain trade offers rather than shipping this down to Texas where she's at. Uh, if you guys have something you want to trade for it, it's a really cool old truck. Got big old super singles on the back. Um, if you want it, make us an offer and we'll let Lacey know. Lacey, if you want it, let us know. Otherwise we're just gonna uh, store it or maybe ship it back to Texas. BR350, my other snowcat. This is actually my first, now my second snowcat I ever owned. This thing was an absolute monster. Worked really well. Tracks are good, rubber's good, um, blade, all the components are there. The engine blew up on us. So I, everything's gonna be complete, including the wings and everything for the blade, which we have right there. Um, but the engine's in pieces. So you're gonna wanna find an engine. I think it's an 8.9 Cummins. Plus nine maybe. This thing right here, somebody should jump on ASAP. 02? No. 2012. 2012 International Terra Star uh, crew cab. This thing's got like the 6.4 power stroke in it. We used this to run parts around and, and used it like crazy for quite a while. And then the transmission uh, had an issue and we had to get it programmed at the dealership and we just never took it over there and just, here it is. We have no need for it. Um, great truck though when it runs awesome delivery truck the big 14 foot body on the back uh this thing could be cool for somebody who's working with it um 06 f350 utility truck uh bad 60 engine utility box whatever make us an offer this guy right here is gonna turn a lot of heads it's an old uh, ford f350 centurion which is basically the precursor to the excursion um i don't even know what motor i think it's a gas motor Maybe. I, I should know way more about this thing than I do, but I don't. All this talking has made my lips chapped. Guys, real talk. Davis, I want you to include this, all right? Am I the only one that uses chapstick, or do more of you guys use it? I don't care. Like, I'm totally comfortable with my masculinity using chapstick, but I know a lot more guys use chapstick. I use a lot of Burt's Beeswax. Like, a lot of it. And I'm not ashamed of it. Um... All right, here's the deal. Another vehicle that I'm not necessarily real keen to get rid of, but if somebody has to have it and you've got an amazing trade or some sort of offer for us, the Subaru Brat slash Impreza. You guys, if you want to go see what this thing is, watch last season of Diesel Brothers where we did the Brat versus the Eagle race. This thing's sweet. Like, it's crew cab, believe it or not. So if you look back in here, the, the Impreza back seat is all in there. So it's got the Impreza engine, Impreza transmission um, with the Brat body. This thing's super cool and it dominated in Moab. However, we broke one of the rear control arms, did some body damage, some miscellaneous stuff. Not huge damage, but broke some stuff. I think it also needs a clutch because Diesel Dave is riding the shit out of the clutch in Moab. Cool vehicle though. If you guys don't take that, or if I don't get enough good enough trade offer, that's gonna be my son Bo's first car because we bought that brat that we that we started with on that project on the day my son Bo was born back in 2015. So it's got like a special place in our on our hearts, but that's a long ways away before he's driving. Uh, last but not least, the infamous excavator. You guys remember this bad boy? I wish I would have done a vlog from when we recovered this thing, when I got it stuck, because we got it buried like in quicksand. You guys saw when we got it running and got it off the beach, and then when we actually transported it from the island, off of the island, the Great Salt Lake, back here to the shop. Um, 
probably the only excavator in the world that's done like 50 miles an hour because we drug it across the uh, the salt flats. Um, with that said, the final drives, they're gonna need work. They did work before we pulled the gearing out to be able to tow it. Motor still started last time I, when we had to move it. So there's, there's some good parts there, um, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's gonna go to work again. Maybe, if you want a project. Uh, also, you guys remember this bad boy, the D8H Dozer. I still am on the fence on whether I'm gonna sell this thing or restore it. I know you guys wanna see it restored, but I just don't know if I wanna start with this one because it's a big project. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, but if you want it and you got a trade offer for us, let us know. It has a bad final drive on the left side. Uh, it'll roll backwards, but it won't roll forward. Engine's good, transmission feels strong, everything else feels really good. It just, missing, it's got something blown up in the final drive. Um, I think it's a mid 60s model. I can't remember, it's the D8H uh, 46A is the serial number on it. And guys, I think that's it for now. For, st oh no, the box trucks. Come on, let's go see the box trucks. These box trucks all have bad engines. It's the International CF600 which is like the four, um, it's like a four cylinder power stroke. Not worth fixing, because the engine's like 15 grand a piece. Unless you absolutely want one of these, then feel free. Trucks are pretty complete though, other than the bumpers are missing. Um, but the boxes are really nice. I wanna say they're like 18 foot boxes. If you need a box truck, and you wanna do a tr some sort of deal, let me know. We got three of them that we'll give away. Oh, that's a trade. Not giving anything. Actually, you know what? I say we're not gonna give anything away. If some of this stuff doesn't find a good home, or if somebody who really needs a vehicle or something like, if there's a, a single mom who needs to get her kids around and you don't have a car, I'll give you the excursion and get it running for you and get it licensed. Um, also, just in general, if you ever find yourself in a really, really bad spot, we can't help everybody, but we try to help as many people as we possibly can. Shoot us an email as well. Um, I gotta be careful saying that because we get a lot of sob stories and a lot of people who don't necessarily need free stuff coming and asking for stuff, but we kind of have an eye for when somebody really desperately needs help. And when we're in a position to do so, we always do it, especially to you guys, YouTube. Like, I think I've, hopefully I've made it clear in the last little bit that we freaking love you guys. Like, hands down, my favorite platform to just communicate and interact on. Uh, that's why we're doing so much content on here. And guys, buckle up because like, all I can say is like, Mr. Beast, we're coming for you. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's a joke. And it's also, there's some seriousness there because we're already one of the fastest growing channels um, in the world. We've grown from 50,000 subscribers uh, back in like November to 750,000. So 700,000 subscribers in the last, what, five months? Pretty good. And that's thanks to you guys. And with that said, don't forget guys, I'm giving away a helicopter. When we hit 10 million subscribers, one of you is getting a helicopter. And if you don't want the helicopter, then I'm gonna give you cash instead. But on the way to 10 million subscribers, you guys already know, every 250,000 subscribers, bam, we're giving away another vehicle from my collection. So by the time we get to 10 million, I'll have given away, what is that, four times 10, 40 different, or 39 different vehicles. We've already given away two. And guess what? Hey, Davis, guess what? What? We just hit 750,000. Did you know that? We did? 750,000 subscribers. Awesome. So guys, that means time for another giveaway, which will be probably in the next uh, video or two. We'll uh, put everybody's name in the hat. Everybody who subscribes, whether you subscribe recently or one of the first subscribers of the channel, we're putting everybody in, doing a drawing. One of you is coming out here and I'm gonna give you this nice GMC steering wheel. I'll even sign it for you. I know what we should do. We should do this old airbag game where we pull airbags out of the, out of the, uh, this stuff and blow each other up. Airbag. <laughs> oh, put that in somebody's seat. All right, guys. I think that's it for now. Maybe I'll pop back on here, but this video is probably already getting pretty long. I hope you enjoyed my junk collection. Now, I'd like to see yours. So, guys, last thing I want to say: if you want to submit a trade offer, send an email to info at heavydsparks.com right here on the screen. All right. Now, do not just email me and say, "Hey, I want that for free." because we'll ignore you and probably block you. But if you want something from this collection, you need to say, this is what I want, this is what I have to trade, these are the details, blah, blah, blah. The more thorough 
your email is, the higher likelihood of getting a response is gonna be because I'll be honest with you, there's gonna be a lot of you who don't even get a response because you won't be very thorough in your email. So keep that in mind. Guys, I wanna uh, hammer home a very important point uh, that I made about sending us emails. We love interacting and communicating with you guys. And obviously in this trade deal, we're gonna need to communicate with you. Here's the deal. I wanna give you a good example of what a well-written email gets you. Go ahead and just, let's just grab this right here and uh... guys, meet Davis. <laughs> Davis is obviously our new vlog guy, one of our newest videographers, editors, and uh, this man right here, when I put out a request to send um, email, you know, resumes and stuff for an editor, this man put together a beautiful email. How long did it take you? An hour. Like an hour. But guess what? It was like one of a thousand emails that I actually opened. There's so many I didn't even open because I could tell they weren't well written. So guys, remember, use Davis as a good example. This man right here took the time, gave me his experience, gave me a demo reel, showed me the stuff that he was working on. And look, he, he works here full time now. So follow Davis's example.